Hi, it's Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is July 30th, 2022. Before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right, so a quick announcement. My super files has actually been approved. It happened last night, which is awesome. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, kind of, this is the way it works. First off, when I tweet to super followers, only they can see the tweets. So that's kind of how, um, that works. If you sign up for the super follows, um, some things that, uh, you can expect is, um, you know, I'm going to have, um, on the weekends, fully annotated charts with my favorite setups. I, it could be, you know, one setup, it could be three setups, it could be five setups. It could be whatever I'm seeing that really looks like the best options coming into the week, right? Um, I'm going to be doing midweek videos for only my super followers. Um, you know, I'm going to follow back my super followers. So my DMs will be open. I think that may be one of the, um, the, the, the coolest things is that, that y'all, if you have questions about, anything really, um, I'll give you my best answer, right? I'll tell you what I would do in that situation. Can't give you any advice, of course, but as far as what you should specifically do, but I say in this situation, here's here's what I would do. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to give a little time and thought to it. I'm not going to just going to give you like a one line little answer. Um, so I think that that is a, a big piece of it. Um, you know, and then, um, you know, and then there's going to be more stuff coming, of course. You know, I'm going to put all my scans. I'm going to start to post only to my super followers, um, the, the, the good ones, but the scans that I'm really looking at to find my the, my best ideas. Um, and there'll be more. So if you're interested in this, um, go to Alpha Charts 365, super follower. Um, go ahead and sign up for that. Um, I appreciate that. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool new thing. And if there's something that you want to see, um, you know, Go and sign up, shoot me uh, a DM, and I would love to, uh, you know, see what we could do with that, right? Um, so these are just my my initial ideas. I plan on adding more, and I hope to create a ton of value for a very small dollar amount. You know, it's not a service, right? Because because um, this is not a service, but this is, um, I will get more towards kind of a mentorship type of thing. That's the way I want the super follows to be. So if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for, you know, listen, and if you are somebody that works and can't do the research, it's me sharing my research with you. So it's going to cut down on a ton of time because I'm doing the time already, right? I, I'm spending the time doing this research. So I'm going to present it to you and it cuts down on the amount of time that you need to do your research. Anyway, anyway, um, that's what's going on. Super follow tweets. Um, again, spe special only for the people that, that sign up and follow. Um, so if you're interested, please go ahead and do that. Um, let's get to back to the video as far as charts go. Great week in the S&P. Um, you can see, I mean, literally three days. The more important thing here is it went up on what was expected to be bad news, negative GDP print. You had a uh, rising, you know, the Fed um, uh, increased rates again. All, you know, uh, the earnings on the mega caps weren't great on some of them. But look what happened. It got bought up every single time. That's awesome news. Now, if you're like me and was in mostly cash for the week because it was going to be such a volatile week, um, you know, you're coming up into this area right here. Now, this right area right here has been support for a long time, turned resistance. Expectation is this should be resistance, especially after, you know, everything moved for like on the weekly, you know, 4% on the week. On the index, that's a, quite a bit. Um, so what can we expect? We have the up Maybe one more day up on Monday, maybe, or maybe a reversal day on Monday. That would be, you know, gap up on a Monday morning. Yeah. And then it reverses down. I would expect some retracement and then a move higher. Okay. Let these moving averages catch up. You have the 50 day nice and flat right now. We've talked about that for a long time. Well, now, as long as price stays above it, you're going to start to see it start to turn back up. 
And now we have a potential, you know, now we have a short intermediate term. Things are moving up. You have the 200 day still declining. But again, we're, we're coming down as it comes closer down here. If we get the breakout, it may not be too long till we get above there as well. Again, those are just things I'm thinking about for the future. But right now, um, watch for it maybe to gap up Monday, sell off halfway through the day, reverse. I expect a retracement probably into the moving averages as they come up and then hopefully the bounce higher. That's the bullish scenario. Obviously, if we take out this low right here, that's the bearish, bearish scenario. Uh, but right now, nothing is telling me that that we're in a bearish scenario. Expect, especially early in the week, some retracement. All right, it could take a week, it could take two weeks for this to kind of play out. But I think this is right now the more likely scenario. So uh, that's what that's what I'm going to be uh, looking for. Looking for those pullback buys on some potential names this um, this week. Um, only the strongest names, of course. Um, so that's SPX. Now RSP. You know what? All the way in here, same same idea. It's going to have to pull back some, let these moving averages catch up and move higher on the weekly 3.92, a very good week uh, for the equal weighted. You know, the mega caps, you know, they did an amazing week. So so that's why you're seeing RSP lag a little bit. Um, but again, looks really, really bullish. Expect that pullback, though, especially if we get a little gap up and then pull back. Um, that, that That's actually the bullish scenario, right? Um, that's what we want to see. Looking at the Qs on the week, it was up 4.46. And again, same exact scenario, right into this potential area of supply. Again, after a gigantic run, let it pull back, you know, and then you have, and we could call this a quasi inverse head and shoulders right here, right? Um, boom, boom. Now, and then if it could pull back here, right? You have this inverse head and shoulders it created is a perfect, nah, it's not perfect, but it's it's pretty good. You know, then it could break out of here, break above this downtrend line right there, you know, and then we have something. Then you have the VWAP from the highs right here before the decline we could take care of, right? Then you have the declining 200-day moving average. Again, it's going to take weeks and potentially months for this to build out the right side of this base, but this is the left side, and that's the bullish scenario. Obviously, we take out this low. We get back below 300, I should say, 295-ish. Um, that's a problem. But you already have the 50 days starting to curl back up again. It's really nice to see. Um, we haven't seen that in a while. Um, so let's uh, let's go with that, right? You know, hopefully we don't have a situation like this, right? We've seen this before. So we want to avoid something that looks like this. Um, and if we get a, a you know, a crap out right over here, um, you know, we know, we know to stand out of the way because this could happen. But right now, let's play the bullish scenario until it's, it, it doesn't come through. So that's the cues, equal weighted cues. Um, same thing, right? I can probably move this higher or, or do something like this, right? That's fine. I think we're still in this zone-ish area, um, but same idea. It's a little bit extended, but I love how the 50 days starting to actually curl up already. Uh, probably needs to just pull back a little bit and then break out. Everything looks really good on that. IWM, um, you know, listen, we drew this out way in advance, right? Five wave pattern. This is working out fine. It filled the gap like we talked about. You go back and watch the videos. We've had this line in here for for a couple months now. Um, you know, kind of boom, reversed higher, came back. This was the important area. I mean, it's been important since, you know, 2018. It's been important since 2020-ish. You know, been important the entire way. It's still important, right? So as long as we're above this area, Definitely a bullish scenario. Um, you see the 50-day, again, curling up. Love it. Um, again, maybe a gap up, then pull back into the moving averages. You know, then you're going to have potentially a launch pad type situation where these are all kind of bunched up together. And uh, and everything's looking really good and just needs to make the right side of this base. But it looks pretty bullish right now. Um, IWO, 
small cap growth. Um, again, similar area. Uh, again, extended into it. Got to see that little pullback and then the breakout. Bullish scenario. Love it. 50 day growing back up. Love how there's aligning. You know, the pullback would just really solidify that as long as the 50 day holds. Um, and really, I'd like to see the 23 day hold more of a shallow sideways motion than a pullback. Um, but that looks really, really good. And just to round it out, let's look at mid caps. I mean, absolutely ridiculous, right? On the week, we are looking at, you know, almost 5%, really outperforming. Looks fantastic. Um, I don't need this on here anymore because 50 days starting to inch higher over here. Love to see that. Is it extended? Absolutely. Um, so is it going to pull back? More than likely, right? And again, I can probably pull this like this. You know, again, it could be anywhere in here. It's really an area. So it, it, we may already be in that area. I may have to, you know, pull this down some like this, right? Something like this. I don't know. Somewhere around there. The point being is that we're getting extended. We're coming into an area of supply. Expect it to, you know, maybe go up a little bit more. That's possible again. And then pull back. Let the moving averages catch up. And then break out. There's your 200-day right there. You know what? If it does that, it lets the 200-day kind of get into this, you know, maybe a little bit lower. And the breakout becomes even that much more significant if it could slice through that 200-day too. So mid-cap's looking fantastic. Let's look at the uh, ETFs now. XLF. We talked about how important this area was going back to 2007, going back to 2018, going back to 2020. All right. And it held right where it had to. I mean, that's so exciting, right? I mean, it did exactly what it had to do. Now, if it breaks here, all bets are off, right? But it's back above the 50 day. It's curling up. You're getting the curl. It's participating in, in this rally. That's what we want to see financials do. They are participating. They look great. Um, SMH, most important ETF, right? Um, we said it's going to potentially pull back, which it did. And then does it go higher or does it roll over? Right now, it's going higher. So I think that's off the table. Um, and I'm going to pull this off the table. And so far, I think we have this scenario, right? Pull back. It broke this downtrend line. Love that. I'm going to just take this downtrend line off now. Okay. And uh, yeah. And then like all these other indexes, you have this area of supply. It's kind of like in this area, whatever. Um, that's looks like it's the new important area. I'm going to take this one off right now just to make things either easier. Again, what would I love to see? I'd love to see this now. Let's just move this a little higher. Go up a little bit more. Come down a little bit and then break out. That's what I want to see. Again, this is starting to get a little extended here. It could go a little higher, absolutely, for a day or two. Uh, but then it's going to have to pull back. Again, you have this inverse head and shoulders that it's trying to form. You know, we only know if it forms after the fact, of course. Boom. 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 Right? Maybe it does that, right? And then it breaks out. That would be, you know, the right side, you know, the right side of the base then builds out and everything is looking pretty good again. And eventually we make it back to all-time highs. That's the bullish scenario. Right now, I have to go with that, right? Because that's what we're seeing right now in these charts that things reacted right even to bad news, right? So looking at transports, XTN, just I mean, phenomenal, right? Up on the week. Sorry, let me do that right. Yeah, 6.51 up on the week. What that's telling you? That's telling you that things are okay, right? It shook off the negative GD, the second negative GDP. It held where it had to hold, which was this area, right? You know, like, fine, I'll go there. This area held. And it bounced up hard. Love to see that, right? That's exactly what we wanted. Now, again, if it breaks down below this area, that's information, right? We'll, we'll deal with that. But I love to see this. Again, now it's extended, pulls back, goes higher. No problem. Makes a higher low. Inverse head and shoulder, like we're talking about. These patterns are looking very similar across the board. Home builders, right? Home, everyone's waiting for that home builder crash, the, the, the housing price crash, whatever. Maybe it will. I don't know. Um but going back home builders, let's go to weekly. You see this area has been crazy important. Didn't even get there. Does it? Will it? I don't know. 
Maybe. All I know is that on the week, home builders did fine. Uh, 3%, they were up. Um, so they're participating. Same type of idea, inverse head and shoulder, look to it, expect the pullback. But I love that it's above the 50-day, which is flattening and starting to rise. These are 200-day, not too far above. So if it gives a little bit more time, could be a week, could be two weeks, right? And then breaks out, very bullish scenario for home builders. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so let's go to the VIX. So those were the ETFs. And then we're going to go to the VIX here to pull off these um, moving averages. Okay, missed a 50-day, there it is. VIX, we talked about this last week. It continues to be in a more bullish area, right? I'm just under 27, declining, bullish area. That's good. Low volatility is what we want. Let's look at bonds. Again, making lower highs and lower lows, made another lower low right over here on Friday. So we are hopefully, looks like we're getting out of, you know, this type of scenario and we're coming into more of this type of scenario, which is what this more looks like. Would love to see this, you know, continue to, to move down. But all in all, everything is looking absolutely fine right now. That That is, you know, bond ratios, or credit spreads are coming back in. I think the disaster scenario right now doesn't look as bad. Put call ratio. No signal. People don't trust this rally yet, right? Everyone's like, ah, I don't know, you know, one, one, one foot, you know, on the line, one foot off the line. So that's good, right? That means that we have potentially higher to go um, because this is what makes markets go up. So that's great. Again, you know, right over here, June 13th or so, didn't quite make it to my line of capitulation, but we talked about maybe that was close enough. And right now, maybe it is, right? Maybe that is close enough. And looking at breath, MMFI, right? Percent of stocks above the 50-day. And look at this beautiful thrust coming off the lows, right? Again, didn't quite get to something that looked like this, but that maybe 12% was, you know, close enough. You saw it there. And again, there's a second one right there. Coincides with the with the put-call ratio. And then boom, I mean, just exploded off the bottom, right? Again, I would love to see it even get even higher. But this is very healthy and a very healthy look to this um, breath thrust right over there. So I really love that. Um, let's look at um, gold. I don't even know if I want to look at gold anymore. You know, there's really nothing to see here as far as this goes. Is this making an inverse end shoulders, some longer term pattern? Maybe, maybe not. But it's not much of a signal. And then looking at Bitcoin, because I think that's probably the better signal. Um, and let's look at the week. Uh, on the week, it's up 6%, and that's a big deal, right? You want to see, you know, risk assets leading. This was a bear flag. This should have broken down this way. That's where the momentum was, and it didn't, right? Tons of information in that. Um, good chance that this comes up to, you know, maybe it's 28,000 or so, and then we'll see. Who knows what happens there? Um, but Bitcoin, you know, confirming, I think, a risk on type atmosphere okay so just to wrap everything up you know everything looks pretty bullish coming into this week um expect a pullback though okay so if you missed out on anything don't chase on a gap open on monday don't chase on the gap open on monday i've said it twice now don't chase uh wait for the pullback wait for the, those those really good entries I'll be doing my stocks to watch video tomorrow and I'll be highlighting my favorite charts. Um, if you become a super follow, I really do appreciate that. Um, and I'll be annotating my, my favorite charts again, maybe my favorite chart, maybe my favorite two or three or four or five charts. We'll see how much, you know, what I, what I see tomorrow. Um, but I'll be annotating them um, where I would get in, what I'm looking for, where I put stops. I mean, a full annotation, what you know, what the chart is really showing me on, on a more um, intricate level, and uh, and again, I, I'm looking forward to uh, to all y'all joining Superfiles. Thank you again, and y'all have a great week.